Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series. The topic is Understanding Self. Mary discusses experiencing the hurt self. Filmed on the 30th of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Okay. Well, it's only an hour till dinner, everyone. So I'm just going to run through this with you pretty quick. My job is to talk to you about experiencing the hurt self. As Jesus said, um, many of you, the majority of you, are nowhere near your hurt self yet. The most of your work is going to need to go into deconstructing the facade and dealing with your addictions in, in an emotional way. And tomorrow I'm going to be... Jesus just talked to you about deconstructing the facade. Tomorrow I'm going to be talking to you about challenging your addictions in a, in a real way, in a way that doesn't involve willpower. So um, that's what I want to encourage you all towards. And what I talk about today is just really some tools, some things to remember, and some things to begin this process of intellectual awareness about anyway. Um, but don't kid yourself that intellectually doing the job is emotionally doing the job. I've spent a lot of time deconstructing my facade, like a lot, a lot of time. And it is the hardest work, I completely agree, it's the hardest work that you will do in growing your soul back into, or into a condition of love and towards God. Honestly, getting towards experiencing the hurt self, there's a lot of hurt, but it does feel like a relief. It does feel like not everything's an effort. We're not, we're not trying to squish ourselves down so much with this facade. That's what it feels like, the facade to me, trying to hold it all together and squishing it down and denying. Uh, once you let go of some of that, at least, it does feel relieving. So this process that I'm going to talk you through happens, I almost feel there's some very important points that I'm going to make that, to be aware of, but I almost feel that once you do a lot of work on deconstructing your facade, there is this hurt self inside of you that does have an instinct for feeling hurt. <laughs> like it understands how to feel hurt a lot better than our adult facade wants to make out or wants us to do. So, um, as I said, let's just run through this really quickly uh, and hopefully succinctly. So, when it comes to experiencing the hurt self, there's a number of things we're going to have to do from an emotional perspective. And keep in mind that some of this you'll do first intellectually, but what, something you're going to have to do emotionally, very first, is just simply to acknowledge that the hurt exists. And that this hurt is really raw, it's very uncontrolled, it feels uh, almost truthful, at times it feels childlike, but it is, it's very... Um, overwhelming if you like. So let me put that up. So it's, it's raw and uncontrolled. And actually, I've just realised that I missed out revising with you guys who the hurt self is, what the hurt self is. So let's, let's rewind for a minute and do that. Who remembers from yesterday what Jesus talked to you about, about the hurt self? Why does it exist? Karina? We were hurt um, by our parents' projections and society's projections right from conception. Yep, so we, there's hurt in us that comes from our environment, so society and parents, yep, good. Who else has more to add to that? Lani? Uh, Lani, um, it's hurt that we've done to others. 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. So there's two types of hurt in our hurt self. Yeah. The hurt that we received and was suppressed and that the hurt we've done to others and we continue to want to suppress and deny. Now, because of that, there's lots of fragments within ourself. So we're calling it the hurt self in a singular sort of a way, but really this is a way of identifying a bunch of hurt parts of ourself that exist already inside of ourself that we're trying to shut down. And they all, if you like, are frozen at different ages. So this goes for the things that happen when you were six months old and two years old and five years old and eight years old, as well as the things that happen when you were 28, 58, 32. All these times that we have created hurt or received hurt and we shut it down. So is that clear to everyone? That's, who, that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the hurt self. Any questions on that before I go on? Okay, so once we now know who our hurt self is uh, and we're having this intellectual process over this period of this eight days, aren't we, of really coming to grips intellectually really with some of these parts of ourselves and yesterday Jesus gave that wonderful slide which described a lot of the feelings associated with the hurt self. Does anyone remember some of those feelings? How it feels? No, no. Cecily? Distressed. Distressed, yep. Glenda? The childhood anger and rage. Yeah, rage, yep. Any other ones? I'm going to put up the slide, I reckon. Oh, yep, Lorleen, you want to have a go? Shame. Shame, yes. Over here? Is it Kadira? Yes. Kadira, um, timid, shy, nervous, yes. afraid. Yes, yes, yeah. Lots of these feelings that, Rita? Okay. Wait for the mic, yeah. Um, Oh, I actually have the positive list here, adventurous and daring. And so that's not what you want right now. No, no sorry. that's the real self. Oh, that's the real that's self. That's the real oh, self. Sorry. Yeah. Let me put up the slide so everyone can have a look. Ah, let me see how to do it. I haven't been trained. Here we go. Okay, so that's what we've covered already. It's injured further by me harming myself or others, stagnant at the age the harm was created and it contains most of my causal emotional pain and suffering. I want to add to that and say there are emotions, as you go through that deconstruction process that Jesus just went through with you, of the facade, there are emotions you're going to have to release in that process. And some of you have been doing that and calling that causal emotion. And in a sense, it is, it's causal in its nature and that when it leaves you, it's gone. But there's going to be more under that. A lot of us are having to do a lot of emotional work just to deconstruct the facade. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Okay. And we can call the hurt self the hurt child to help us identify with it. But I feel we need to be careful about that because a lot of... and. If I speak to the majority of you in the audience who I've known for a long time, you know, I've known a lot of you for a long time now, and knowing you as I do, I know that sometimes, or let's say a lot of the time, when you feel that you are feeling about childhood hurts that have happened to you, you are often feeling the tantrum of the facade. You're feeling you're not getting your own way and it's not fair and you're, you're banding around this, oh, my mum never loved me or, or whatever, but you're not actually yet connected with the, the part of yourself that holds that hurt. And you need to be careful about letting yourself get away with bad behaviour and calling it, I'm experiencing my hurt self. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we can, and often these feelings feel childlike. Obviously, if we've suppressed them at two years of age, they're going to feel very childlike when they come out of us. 
Um, but even this quality, this raw and uncontrolled quality uh, that exists even around the hurt that we've done to others as an adult, when we really connect to that feeling, that part that we've suppressed, the law of compensation and the, the repentance that we might go through, is going to feel raw and uncontrolled. And often we associate that with being childlike, don't we? But actually our soul in its very nature is very emotional. So that raw and uncontrolled quality is a quality of your soul, not just a child, but very often we like to call it a childlike. Okay, here we go. Here are the words that I wanted to just go over with you guys. Pained, hurt, aggrieved, wounded, injured, upset and distressed. Timid, nervous, shy, a lot of the things that Kadira mentioned. Fragmented, disjointed, uneven. A lot, of these, the, a lot of us are actually very fragmented and disjointed because of these, all this suppression that's gone on. Okay, I'll just let you... Humiliated, rejected, angry, a lot of those kinds of feelings. Okay. All right, and it lacks development, and this is again revision of what Jesus went over with you yesterday, so I'm not going to spend much time there. Lacks development because, of course, there's all this fragmentation and suppression, and it prevents God's truth from entering us on that subject. Okay, all right, let's go back to these really important emotional steps. Or, and they're not even things that are going to happen necessarily in sequence, but these things that are going to help you as you get closer, as you've deconstructed a lot of your facade, help you when it comes to experiencing these hurts that you've suppressed. So firstly, and for a lot of us, this even has to happen intellectually, um, because if you think about it, while we're all living in our facade, our facade desires to stay away from the truth. That's why it's there. It doesn't want the truth about anything. It doesn't want the truth about our real self. It doesn't want the truth about our hurt. So while we're living in our facade and reinforcing our facade all of the time every day, we are not even intellectually acknowledging that the hurt exists. In fact, we don't want to acknowledge it. So you can see that this acknowledgement of the hurt self from an intellectual perspective and then as you go through the deconstruction emotionally is a very important step. Can anyone think what else we might have to do once we acknowledge that the hurt exists? What other thing? What, it's almost a next thing that you might do. Lani? Um, Lani, um, be willing to go there? Yeah. There's, there's a reason why we're not yet willing to go there. Do you have any ideas about that? Uh, we don't want to feel the pain. We don't want to feel the pain and we've got this facade in place, don't we? Mm. And what's the facade doing to this hurt self? What's it telling it all the time? Oh. Let, it's, let, it's telling us that it doesn't exist or... It, that it doesn't exist, yeah. And that you don't have to feel it. And you don't, it's telling it a whole bunch of untruths. Yes, yeah. very good. Yep. Yeah. If we go to someone else had their hand up as well. Yeah, Glenda. Saying the facade is saying that it's stupid and it's not worthwhile and it's too hard. Yes. Okay. So once we acknowledge that the hurt exists, we have to acknowledge how we're currently treating our hurt self. Does that make sense? And again, while we might start doing this intellectually, eventually this is going to have to be an emotional thing that we acknowledge. So we're going to acknowledge the treatment of the hurt self. Now, who thinks that they have a lovely facade that treats their hurt self wonderfully? <laughs> who has a facade that treats their hurt self wonderfully? You do, Trent? No, let's give you the mic. So this facade you've got going on, 
You've got all these hurt parts of yourself that are suppressed. Do you think that that facade is treating those hurt parts of yourself well? No. 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 Well, how's, it, how's it treating it? Um, <clears throat> it doesn't want you to feel the hurt, so it's doing everything against the hurt self. Yes, yeah, yeah. So in this process, we're going to have to acknowledge that treatment and that, that treatment is harsh, aren't we? Emotionally acknowledge that it's quite harsh treatment. And then if we're actually going to get to feeling the hurt self, what will we have to do? If all of this, yeah, you want to go, Trent? To have to go against the facade. Yeah, well, we're going to have to emotionally change our will, aren't we? This will that's currently treating our hurt self really harshly, we're going to have to go through an emotional process of softening being soft to this hurt parts of ourselves. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. yeah. Catherine? Mary, is the facade um, blaming the hurt self? Yeah. Let, let's talk about how, how we are treating our hurt self. So, Catherine, blaming, yes. Glenda mentioned another one was judging, or angry, judging, yep. What else? Yep, if we go to Sherry. Um, it's treating us like our parents treated us as children. Yes, very good. Or others as well. Because we've learnt this facade, haven't we, as children, and we... We did that to protect the hurt that we felt as children and weren't able to suppress. So very often, weren't able to express, I'm sorry. So very often we continue suppressing the hurt in the same way that the people around us in our environment did. And we learn more ways as we get older as Yes, well. yes, as we have more experiences. So if you pass next to you to Nick. Uh, very much diminishes and uh, says that the emotions aren't justified. Yes, it's saying, what, what have you got to be sad about? What's wrong with you? Look at your life. You're all right. Come on. You call that a bad day, do you? <laughs> yeah, so you're, you're in touch with your uh, facade there, what it's saying. It's really sad, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, next to you to Rose. Rose, um, it has no compassion and it's like build a bridge and just get over it. Yeah, yeah, it's tough, isn't it? It's really hard, hard on these hurt parts of ourselves. Uh, Susan? Feels for me that it's, it's really controlling and trying to keep it all together and um, not be crazy. <laughs> it yeah. feels like when I let go, <laughs> that little mm -hmm. tiny smidgen sometimes that yep. I'm almost going crazy. Yes. So there's a, there's a number of ways, isn't there? There's this judgmental, come on, build a bridge and get over it kind of thing. Then there's another, another that's how we suppress. There's another mm -hmm. group of emotions, if you like, yeah. that we use to suppress, our facade, if you like, enforces, which is, come on, you're going crazy. Yeah. Nobody else is doing this. What are you doing? Get back, get it back under control. Yep. Yeah, this has a lot of control. Yeah. yeah. If you come here. If you just go a bit close with the mic. Could it be really insidious and tell you what have you got? Look at all the lovely things you've got. What have you got to be crying about? Yes, so that was it. Could it be really insidious and tell you just be constantly undermining you, saying, What have you got to cry about? Your life's all right. Yes, definitely. Okay, if we go back to Jennifer, thanks. Thank you. I can be really determined, uh huh. And I just realized that I can, uh, someone called me driven. Yes. at one stage. So I can be really hard on myself, but I sometimes don't know if that's the driven self or determination because I do have this, you know. 
Well, I think you're picking up on the feeling that you enforce upon yourself, which is really harsh and, come on, you've got to get this done. It's an expression of willpower, isn't it? Okay. So yep. you're not being soft That's to the, the will. Yes. Yeah. So you're pushing, pushing. I agree. Yep, that's a way that we can suppress our hurt. Come on, keep going, get on. If we go to Pierre. Pierre. Um, shameful about it. A lot of shame about this. About the hurt that you have. Mm -hmm. So a feeling of like, oh, what are you doing? You're showing, you're crying now. This is embarrassing. Is that what you mean? Mm. Yeah. Very embarrassing. Yeah. 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 Okay, they're all good, and there's a lot of things we do. You know, hurry up, cheer up, get over it. You've got nothing to cry about. Come on, you should be better than this, all of those kinds of things. Now, a lot of that relates to the harm and the feelings of hurt that we have suppressed, things that were done to us. How does the facade deal with the feelings of hurt where we've harmed others? Angela? Uh, denial, first up. Yeah, so doesn't want to see it at doesn't, all. Doesn't. Yeah. And what if something? What if an inkling comes up? You know, what does the kill? Um, I want to hide or um, cover it up. Cover it up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So how we? How do we cover these things up if we go to Max? Blame them. Blame them, yeah. No, oh, they did something to me first. So their fault. It's their fault. Like, if they hadn't kicked me, I wouldn't have punched them, you know, that kind of thing, definitely. And, yeah, if we go back to Rose. Rose does not want to take responsibility. Yes, yes, definitely. We're very good at rationalising away the pangs of conscience that we have, aren't we? And that is actually treating our hurt very harshly also. When we do something and we have that pain, oh, wow, that didn't feel that good, what I just did. And then we rationalise and cheer up and hurry up and get away from it. We've just missed a big opportunity for ourselves to heal a hurt, to feel a hurt and that would lead us to he healing a lot more things. And we do this a lot in our facade and it's actually quite harsh. Okay, so I'm going to move on. Is it questions or more comments on the how we treat our hurt self? Y yep, sure. It's Kadira. Um, when we go into a state of overwhelm about things that we've done to somebody else, mm -hmm. is that the facade? Like, like sometimes it's just so intense I can't deal with it? Yeah, I feel that when you feel it's so intense you can't deal with it, it's very often self-punishment. Right. Which is different from feeling the, fe the hurt feelings of the law of compensation and the, the harm that you've done to other people. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Very often when we're prone to self-punishment, we, we might have spirits prompt us and we prompt ourselves like, oh, I did that, oh, I did that. But, and then we get into this state of like, oh, I can't cope with that. Oh, my gosh, I'm just a terrible, 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 terrible person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that is actually not us f feeling our hurt self. Right. And it's actually, when you explore that further, you'll find it's an addiction. Right. It's a way of avoiding some truth in your okay. life Thank about you. yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. no worries. Okay. So we're going to acknowledge the treatment of our hurt self then we're going to have to stop that harsh treatment, aren't we? If we're actually going to feel anything, we're going to have to stop rationalising, and rationalizing, sorry, and we're going to have to stop excusing and cheering ourselves up or treat, judging ourselves for how we feel. We're going to have to stop all of that treatment. What might happen next? We've done all this, we've acknowledged it, we've acknowledged the treatment and we've gone, that's it, I'm going to use my will, 
It's an emotional decision. I'm going to stop this harsh treatment. Imagine if you had a child who was getting treated really, really harshly and you were berating them all the time and saying, come on, get up, you didn't hurt yourself, get on with it, what are you, how are you going to survive, be tougher. And then all of a sudden you said, imagine how, firstly how that little child feels under that treatment, which if you think about it is a lot of what we do to ourselves now. And then if you suddenly, as the adult in that situation said, you know what, that was terrible. Well, like, how I've been treating you is absolutely terrible. I'm never, ever going to do that again. I promise you. What might happen with that child? Marco? I'd uh, probably be confused or not knowing what to do. Like, yeah. Yeah. And actually, you know, that's a very astute observation because as you work through these steps emotionally, there are parts of yourself that start to feel really confused because suddenly all this harsh treatment that's been going towards it since you were two that came from your environment and then you just piled on top, suddenly it's not coming anymore. And it's like, whoa, what do I do? Is this okay? Am I allowed to not like receive that anymore? And actually what will start to happen is that, that those parts of yourself might start to have a voice. They might start to gain some awareness of themselves again, if you like. It's really you gaining more awareness of yourself, of the parts of yourself that you have suppressed. So allowing your hurt self a voice at whatever age, enabling it to say the things that it didn't say, and some of those are going to feel quite childlike as they say them, you know, things that were shut down and suppressed, that's a really important part of this process. And you begin to discover the, the flawed viewpoints of the world that these parts of yourself are holding on to. So allowing a voice is really important. Does that make sense to everyone? Yep. So allow the hurt self the voice, a voice. Okay, now if we still imagine this person who's been totally suppressed and over, so much overbearing treatment for all these years, suddenly that treatment stops and suddenly they're allowed to have a voice, what usually happens after that? You're here. Carol, they talk a lot. They do talk a lot, it's true. <laughs> and if they're expressing, <laughs> if they're expressing the, um, the feelings of hurt that they have, what happens when we, when we allow ourselves to be truthful about the hurt, whether we've done it or we've received it? If we, maybe if we maybe go back to Nada. Nada? feels safer to actually feel. It does, and in fact, allowing a voice is one of the most... This is when you're starting to love these parts of yourself. You're starting to provide a safer environment as soon as you stop this harsh treatment. And then what's happening for you right now starts to happen. The feelings happen. So we can, we're going to have to, in this process, experience the feelings of the hurt, aren't we? Okay, so I'm, I don't have room to put it. Experience the hurt. And that hurt is going to feel, as you experience it, it's going to feel the age at which you suppressed it. It just is. And this process is really a part of integrating a whole heap of fragments that you've been trying to keep separate. So as I've started to experience this, which is really only recently for me, you know, I've done so much work on addictions and facade and it's really only been very recent that I've begun to experience my hurt self. But it's very disconcerting at times to have a big cry and then suddenly realise, oh, I'm a grown-up woman. I've got a big body. I didn't know this. there's a part of myself that I wasn't allowing to be felt 
that's suddenly allowed to be present and has to come to grips with the fact that I'm a grown-up now. Which is pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> It's a cool thing. And to allow this integration thing to happen is a very beautiful process. You suddenly feel more, a lot more like yourself that you didn't even realise you weren't feeling very much like yourself. Yeah. Okay. So is that all fairly clear for everyone? There's two really essential things in addition to these things that you're going to need to do if you're going to experience and heal your hurt self. And you're going to probably do them concurrent with all of these other things. So I'll just rub off what we've got and we'll talk about them. Can anyone think what they might be, Pierre? Pierre, I'm sorry, Marie. I just want to come back to what you raised. Yes. About stopping the harsh treatment. Yep. Um, at that point, when you deal with most of your facade self, um, is there an, uh, still the problem of the harsh treatment coming from others? Or are you already insensitive to it because it it keeps on all the facade of others keeps on projecting. Well, don't do it you know? okay let's talk about that that's a good question so the harsh treatment at the moment towards our hurt self comes largely from our facade and our addictions doesn't it it's saying suppress deny suppress deny rationalize get away from this hurt that you're carrying around now, as you give up that harsh treatment, and remember I said that this is an emotional process where you, you change your will, your current will is, I don't want that hurt, I hate that part of me. Do you remember in the, the movie that you watched last night, there was some really powerful lines in that movie where Bruce Willis, the grown-up, was talking really about the, himself as a little boy. Do you remember one part in the... In the um, movie where Bruce Willis's love interest was was looking at him as a child and he was like oh I'm such a dag you know or whatever it was and she said do you loathe yourself or do you I can't remember the exact word do you do you detest yourself or something and he said yeah don't you and that's actually a very very poignant part of the film isn't it because he's really demonstrating what a lot of us feel about our hurt selves we we loathe them we think they're disgusting and horrible and we don't want to know them at all. So that's the way our will is currently expressed. And if you think about it in the movie, he was really harsh, wasn't he? I, th I think it's an absolutely fantastic portrayal of really how the facade... He, his whole job was about creating a facade for himself and other people and, um, you know, finessing everything so that none of the real emotions were shown, his own or anyone else's. And any time anyone showed an emotion, he was like, just cut it out. I hate this, you know, which is exactly what he was doing towards himself. So... When we're stopping this harsh treatment, Pierre, our will, the harsh treatment is an expression of our will. So we're going to have to go through an emotional process, uh, and even as Jesus talked about an intellectual process initially, of saying, this is a sin, this is not helping me, this is hurting me, this has a cause inside of me. And then a soul-based process of saying, you know what, I want to find the cause of this, the reason why I'm doing this really harsh emotional treatment towards myself and I want to remove it so that I no longer put that harsh treatment onto myself. Now, as you go through that process, you will find that you become much less open to the harsh treatment of others because you no longer think that it's okay. You feel it as unloving. So while harsh treatment might come towards you, you're not as open to receiving it anymore. You're saying, hey, no, that's harsh. I don't have to receive that. That's not loving and I don't want to treat myself like that anymore. So I don't really want to accept that from anyone else either. 
but it'll be a softer place actually. You won't be trying to defend and go, get away from me, you're being so unloving. You know, it's a softer place because you've grown actually in your love of yourself through that process. Does that make sense to everyone? Yep. Okay. All right. So we've run through some really key things you have to do. Basic things. Acknowledge that the herd exists and that it's going to feel pretty uncontrolled when it happens and raw. Then acknowledge the treatment, stop the treatment, allow the voice, and then allow the feelings. Feel the feelings. There's two other important things for you to do. And it might help to think about if there was this little kid in front of you who'd been treated really harshly for all of its life, what are two other things that you would like to do for that child now that all that's finished? Catherine? Tell the child that you love it. Yeah. Even more than tell it, wouldn't you just yeah. want to love it? Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. So let's put... So, very good, first one. I'm going to love and care for my hurt self. Now, how might you do that practically? Hiroko? Okay? Hiroko, uh, apologise to the hurt. Apologise to the hurt self. Well, a lot of that you've kind of been doing, hey? And remember, this is. We're calling it the three, you know, there's these three aspects of your one self. But in, while you're dealing with changing your will from treating these parts of yourself really harshly into a state of stopping that harsh treatment, there's actually a lot of kind of softening that you do. And it's almost like if you don't necessarily say, oh, I'm sorry, well, you might want to, but there's a feeling of apology, isn't there? Yeah. Repentance. Yes. And in the apology, there's also an acknowledgement of the truth, isn't there? For, for any of us to actually apologise, yeah. we must acknowledge the truth of what we did. Yeah, I've we? done too much. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 So we'll acknowledge the truth, if you like. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. That's a definite part of love. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Next to you, Linda. Would it be nurturing? We need to nurture ourselves through this process, not be so hard, become a bit softer with ourselves about what we've experienced? Yeah, so exactly right. How would you do that? How do you nurture? Good question. Yeah, it is a good question, isn't it? A lot of us are challenged by this because it's we're not used to it. If we go to Dennis and then to Karina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ses, yeah. yeah thanks. Dennis, have compassion. Yep, yep, okay. So we'll be compassionate. So compassionate for what's occurred and why it's occurred, yeah. Karina? Spend time with it and, and listen. Yes. So we're going to listen to all these things that have been shut down for so long. What have they got to say, these parts of ourselves? So listen and... I, very key, spend time. Most of us don't make any time whatsoever for our hurt, do we? We rush and bully ourselves. And if we feel afraid, well, go on, just get in there and do it. You know, don't we do that? We don't ever soften and go, okay, it's okay to be afraid, let's do it anyway. It's like, come on. So taking time to connect to this part of yourself, these parts of yourself, to allow them their expression is really important. So, time. Any other ways? Uh, if we go Rose and then Rita. Rose. To be present with them and tell them that you believe them. Yeah, okay. So, again, this, this acknowledgement of the truth is really important. Yep. Rita. Let's start with is it also to cre create an environment where you can be alone and yeah. to not mix with other people? Yeah, although you might want to mix with other people, but can we call it a safe environment? A safe environment to cry and... Mm -hmm. To feel. 
And wouldn't that also include creating a safe, a safe place to feel, but also acknowledging, you know what, those people have been treating you really crap for all these years. I'm not going to put you in that position anymore. We're not going there. So that's, that's about creating more safety for these hurt parts to actually feel. When that little kid was in front of us and we were bullying it and hurrying it and come on and criticising it and all of those things, it didn't really have any space or a feeling of safety to feel, did it? So part of this loving and caring for our hurt self is actually saying, I'm not going to put you in situations anymore where you just get attacked. Because you can't, it's just creating more hurt and we can't even, I can't even feel anything when we're in those situations. Catherine? Lately I've been telling my inner child how beautiful it was when it was young yeah. and how much it was damaged by um, people around it yeah. and um, just saying that I'm going to be here now whenever you want me. Yeah, that's really beautiful, Catherine. And you've actually taken us to our final point, which is to educate to educate, that's something Jesus has been speaking to you guys about a lot the last couple of days, to educate these parts of ourselves because they really were not educated in love. They were shut down. There was no more coming in or out. It's, it's a no-go zone and there has been, even while lots of you and your adult self, big facade, been coming to Divine Truth lectures for how many years, there's parts of yourself that haven't even received this information. Because you're shutting them down hard. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so. So the last point is to educate. Our hurt self. And Catherine mentioned some lovely ways that she's begun to educate some hurt parts of herself, which is telling, them, telling herself the truth that she was created beautiful. What other ways might we begin to educate? Speaking the truth about what really happened and it wasn't our fault. That was another thing Catherine mentioned. Rita? And that you are created innocent? Yes, yeah. That you weren't full of sin to begin with, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yep, uh, Cecily? Educate my hurt child about God and God's truth. Yes, that would be a great place, wouldn't it, to start. The truth about all this stuff, the truth about who you are that we've all been talking about and the, the fact that you have a will and you can use that will in or out of harmony with love and that that has consequences, all of these things would be great things to educate ourselves, these parts of ourselves about, wouldn't it? Any other ideas? Go to Rose. To let her know or him know that we are absolutely devoted to her like we actually wanted to be devoted to in the first place. I don't really know what you mean. What do you mean? That we just have a passion for cherishing her, wanting her to grow, wanting yep. her to blossom. So that's it. I feel there's a couple of things I want to say about that mm -hmm. statement. And this is, see what creeps in, and this is, I want to talk to you about this in my conclusion. This fragmentation thing of like her, this child. I agree, there's parts of ourselves that are very childlike, but they're fragments. And you want to beware of creating this whole other child that you keep separate from yourself. So yes. The other thing is that I feel what you're talking about there is love. Nurturing and cherishing and those kinds of things. And here I'm asking you about what are you going to educate these parts of yourself about? And that she has every right to be herself. Yes, so the truth about the self, about yourself, yeah, your real self, yeah. Okay, what other, like, I feel we could get much more specific. There's lots of things. If we go to Laura at the back. Um, 
that God still loves you even though you have hurt and you feel hurt. Like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely that you are loved. So these truths about God. What else? Uh, if we go to Sandra. And how to love others as well. Mm-hmm. What might be involved in that, Sandra? First, choosing not to harm them, using your will in the right direction. Yeah, so this idea of being responsible for our will, the fact that we are responsible for our will, that's a really important thing, isn't it, for, for these parts of us that have been suppressed to know. Because some of us have hurt parts of ourselves that feel like there's no consequences and we, we don't have to, there should be a consequence for me doing things. I should get what I want. That's actually a hurt part of ourselves that feels that, yeah. So yes, I agree. So self-responsibility is one of Self-responsibility, yeah. things like ethics, morality. A lot of these hurt parts of ourselves have no education in sexuality, soulmates, what soulmate love is really about. Because they've been fragmented and shut down. And if you think about it, even as an adult, sometimes we've taken actions in a relationship where hurt We've, we've generated hurt for ourselves. We might have received it from a partner or we took some actions and there was hurt that we accrued in our soul. And if we had have felt that hurt, we might have learnt some truths about soulmates or about God. But we didn't, we shut it down. So we've been, we have been perpetuating this lack of education through this desire to shut down the hurt self. So this process counts for not just these childlike parts of ourselves, which I agree is a really important part, but even for these adult parts of our hurt self that have been shut down. Jesus? Um, so some parts of ourselves actually believe completely the wrong thing, completely yes. the wrong thing. And we're going to have to teach them what the right thing is. Exactly, yeah. They want to hold on to the idea that, well, even uh, issues of morality. No, there's, you can have lots of partners, there's no such thing as soulmates. Like parts of ourselves believe that. And we're going to have to educate them about these things. Do you want to add more to that, darling? No? Yeah. So we're, we're telling the truth and we're, we're if you like, Education is about removing a lot of falsehood that we want to hold on to as well, isn't it? Susan? Um, we really can't educate our, our hurt self until we've been through the emotions ourselves, can we, in, in our facade and our... Because it's, it's through that experience that we're able to talk to our child. Yeah. If you um, Well, let's, let's talk about that a bit. Do you remember yesterday Jesus had the diagram on the board and he had, I might be able to recreate it. My board skills are not his, but here we go. He had the real self in there, the hurt self and the facade self. Yeah. And as we keep kind of stressing, it is one self, but there's just yeah. fragments happening. And he said if you work through the facade on one issue... Then we could talk to the child about that. Uh -huh. But we, we've got to work through it first, haven't we? Yes. Yeah. And those, these steps, remember these steps that I'm talking about, they're all emotional. These, mm. Everything I've been mentioning, it happens from an... Yeah. If you're really going to heal this hurt self and experience it, you are, even experience it, I mean, you, it's all going to have to happen emotionally. So this education is emotional. From our own personal experience. Yeah. It's because uh, I was just thinking... Even as an example, if you're talking about soulmates to your child and you haven't experienced the sense of being with your soulmate, I, I don't see a great deal of truth in that. Yeah. So let's, let's now imagine it like this. These three parts of ourselves are sometimes going to be getting an education simultaneously. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, as you as you work through it, and, and the, as you work yeah. through it, as you as you become more accepting of these hurt parts of yourself, yeah. which allows more connection to your real self, then you then all of you, if you like, a less fragmented version of yourself begins to come to Divine Truth Seminars, begins to have experiences, and there's an education based on your will. Yeah. Your will to know, yeah. your will to learn about soulmates, for example, yeah. then if you use your will to involve all three parts of yourself, the education begins to happen all together. Does that make sense? So it's almost a, an automatic thing, isn't it, as a result of? Yeah, I suppose so, as you're experiencing those things. But you do have to desire truth and honour truth in that process. Like, I feel that it's important that we recognise when we feel our hurt self, we have to still have the will for truth. We have to, a desire for truth. Otherwise, we're going to keep reinforcing the negative sort of beliefs and ideas that we imbibed growing up about hurt. It never ends. Oh, I just feel this and it'll never end, you know. No, the truth is, it will end. And if I've worked through enough of my feelings of lack of faith, then I'm going to be able to be educating my hurt self about those things, about the nature of the human soul as I go through it. Can you see that your will is it's like aspirations as well and this desire to, to honour truth through this process? If you don't desire to honour truth through the process, you will stay in these cyclical kind of hurt spaces. So we can't assume that the hurt self knows what to do about love. We just can't. We're going to have to exert some will to discover that. Just like yeah. our real self has to develop in those qualities as well. Thanks, Mary, so much. Does that much. make sense? Thank yeah, you. no worries. Yeah. Rita? Yeah. What about all those inner child workshops? Were they good or were they not good? Rita, I love how you guys are just bringing me to my next point every moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, that's what I wanted to say about the basic things involved in experiencing your hurt self. If you're going to experience your hurt self and heal it, you're going to have to embrace everything that I just mentioned. So, do you remember those things that I mentioned? Acknowledge that the hurt exists and that it's really raw and emotional and uncontrolled and often feels childlike. Acknowledge the current treatment of that self. Stop the harsh treatment. So we could call it acknowledge the current harsh treatment. Stop the harsh treatment. Trust me, if you don't stop that harsh treatment, it's ridiculous. It's like asking an eight-year-old to come out here and feel its feelings while we're all screaming at it. It's never going to happen. And that, do not underestimate the beautiful, powerful process of going emotionally changing your will from harsh treatment to kind, caring and loving treatment of these hurt parts of yourself. That's a lot of the work, guys. And that's working on your addictions and your facade. Okay, stop the harsh treatment. Find the voice. Find the connection to these hurt... Do anything that connects you to your hurt self. Now, sometimes doing some inner child work can help. But I'll talk a little bit more late, later about what the issues I see with that kind of work. But I have certainly engaged some of that work in recent times and it's helped me heaps to connect to my hurt self. Okay? Um, so find the voice. Allow yourself to be truthful and allow those parts of yourself that were suppressed just to say what they think is the truth because it'll help you see how the damage is, what, they, what the false beliefs they're carrying are. Okay, once you do that, you're going to have the feelings. The feelings are going to come up. And throughout that whole process, you want to be loving, caring and educating these parts of yourself. And that is a will-based decision. You will have to use your will to do that. Sound all right, everyone? Yeah, a question about that process, because I'm going to talk about your last question next. So, about the inner child stuff. If we get the mic, yeah. Thanks, Donna. I'm not clear about how I do that. Do I talk to myself lovingly in my mind or with words? Or... So I'm totally not sure about anything. 
Yeah. So remember we listed some of the things that you're going to do in order to yeah. love yourself. So make time, create but, but safe But I talk to myself. Or is that just without words? You know what? Sometimes you might talk to yourself. Sometimes it'll be without words. Essentially, yeah. it's an act of your will and it's uh -huh. an emotional process you're uh -huh. going to have to go through. It has no language. I don't need to do it in English. I, I think I get it now. I feel that you're worrying, you, you're intellectually engaging yeah. with, with things that are going to be a soul-based process. Yeah. yeah, I think how it actually should look like. Yes. And it doesn't look like anything. Yes. I... But when you do educate yourself, you might use a journal, write yeah. the truth. So this part of yourself that just got uncovered, write down the truth. Mm -hmm. write, let that hurt part of yourself write how it feels and then write the truth. Yeah. Say the truth. Mm -hmm. or watch or, the truth. Or also if law of attraction brings me other children at the same age, that might trigger myself. Is that it too or not? Are you talking about education? or Yeah, connecting? education, that something comes up and I allow myself to go there. Yep, so then you're talking about experiencing the hurt feelings, are you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now, the only way you're going to get to allowing those feelings is to stopping the harsh treatment. So just having a little child come up to you is not going to mean that you'll suddenly start feeling your feelings. No. So oh. everything that Jesus talked to you about today, about deconstruction of the facade has to be done before you're going to start experiencing your hurt self. Okay, thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Final two points that I just wanted to leave you with, and there are a couple of just beware ofs. Beware of wanting to stay fragmented. Beware of doing a lot of inner child work but never actually having the will or desire to grow up, to educate. A lot of us feel comfortable, oh, I'll just connect to that inner child part of myself. She's someone completely different. And do you know what that is? That's the opposite of integrating. That's staying separate. It's a, it's a way, and sometimes, you know what can happen in that work? Is we get into a bit facade with it. We suddenly find, oh, I've got a sparkling, wonderful child that resembles the real self. When how can that, how can that be real because we haven't been through our hurt? This is my problem with inner child stuff where they go, you've got a wonder child inside of you, already there. Well, no, there's a lot of hurt. There's anger. There's all kinds of other feelings that block the natural expression of those those qualities of the real self that Jesus spoke to you about yesterday. Now those qualities of the real self are not even childlike or childish or chi they don't belong to a child, they belong to your soul. So you don't have to associate them with a child anymore. Yes, when you experience some of your hurt childlike feelings, those feelings will become more present in you. Mm -hmm. They just will. You'll start, they'll just pop out of you. But it's not because you're being an inner child or a sparkling wonder child. It's because that's your real self. So just beware of creating this inner child that holds all this wonder when really it's your soul and there's just a lot of harm and damage that you're going to need to clear from these hurt parts of yourself and then they'll naturally be present. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Sherry? And this is where the causal emotions are located as well. So some of it's going to be very intense yes. and painful to experience. Right? Definitely, yeah. yes. The majority of your causal emotions exist in the hurt self. Yeah. yeah. Okay, second beware, and I mentioned it as, as I was introducing the talk, is beware of feeling things in your facade and calling them your hurt self. It's only going to get self-pitying, circular. It's going to, you're going to use, it, use these hurts that happen in childhood as an excuse for poor behaviour of your facade, you know, which only creates more hurt. So just beware of... Yep, darling? 
Um, I was just thinking a great example is what happened last week with, uh, with one person who was going through all of these emotions, crying, 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 all these different emotions because she thought she'd been abused and all this kind of stuff. And then, and actually, she hasn't been abused. She has an addiction to drama. And so she generated all of this supposed hurt in her hurt self when she hasn't dealt with the addiction to drama and the desire to avoid her real hurt, which is her facade. So suddenly she's got this history of sexual, childhood sexual abuse when actually when we called her on the fact that she's got an addiction to drama and she really doesn't want to feel the truth of what is really hurt inside of her, she dropped it. Now I see that happen, you look pretty shocked, but I see that kind of thing happen with a lot of people where because there's an intellectual process engaged with divine truth teachings, we intellectually go, what could be the causal reason why I just did that really crappy thing? <laughs> and then, then my facade wants to have a few addictions met and it's okay, I, I'm all right with having a bit of a cry and suddenly, whoop, I've generated an intellectual idea which meets an addiction and I'll have a bit of a cry in the addiction. Uh, Jesus, then Cecily. <laughs> And for this lady, she was just being told a whole heap of untruths by spirits yeah. because she wanted to have the drama. Yeah. So she desired the drama, she liked the drama, she gets attention when she's doing a dra great big drama. And so a heap of spirits just told her a whole heap of stories which she then, because she likes the drama, she just received, received them. She then like, started allowing herself to feel all their emotions about it and they didn't even have the, the problem either, of course. Yes. It's all just a drama because they all like drama yeah. and she attracted the drama and then she calls that processing causal emotion. And it's so far from it. And this is something else you notice between processing, which is really just emotions in the facade, and actually experiencing the hurt self, there is a very different quality between those two emotional states. The crying between those two emotional states is very different. Often when we're crying in our facade, doesn't matter what we tell ourselves it's about, it's often really because we're not getting our own way and we think we should and we've got a huge false belief that we think we should. And people can cry about that for three hours. It doesn't mean they touch any of their hurt. When you're experiencing emotions from your hurt self, it's, as I said in the beginning, raw. It feels very overwhelming. It's truthful. There's no desire to blame and there's no desire to involve others in it. It's your experience and you want to have it for yourself. Does that make sense? Sess, you had something? Could it be also that we might use some real events um, but in our facade tell ourselves some stories about... Well, like Absolutely. This. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Please? Yeah, sure. Well, I notice a lot of people looking at past events feeling like they want to have been deprived. So looking at a circumstance and wanting to feel that it was really a depriving kind of a circumstance, when actually the feelings coming from the adults in that, they feel like, okay, let me be more specific. They're in an adult situation. And they're not getting what they want. Then Their soulmate isn't absolutely adoring them. They feel like, this is because my dad never loved me. You know, this is, uh, he's not loving me and that's triggering a feeling that my dad never loved me. When actually what I see really commonly is dad created a little princess who said, you are a wonderful girl and I'll do whatever you want and you, will, you, are, you deserve everything. And, you know, he did it for some addictive reasons that weren't loving and it did create a hurt in the girl that grows into a woman, but it's not the hurt that the adult woman now wants to say. She wants to say I was deprived of love and it was terrible and nobody ever paid me any attention and that's why he doesn't want me. But actually the feeling is, ah, oh, in my childhood I got a huge addiction created, which is if as long as I look pretty and be a princess, I'll get whatever I want. Now I'm an adult, I'm not getting what I want and it doesn't feel very loving. This is a process of dealing with an addiction giving up an addiction. 
This is not hurt. This is having to let go of some false beliefs. This kind of thing happens really commonly. And it's because we're more comfortable with feeling, I was hurt and deprived, than feeling, actually, I've got a raging, huge addiction that's demanding on everyone. Does that make sense? Yeah, thanks. Something else I noticed just commonly, not in all of you, but in quite a number of you in the audience, is a feeling that, that you want to be cared for. You want to be G'd up and encouraged and you want people to make a fuss of you and take care of you and go, oh, are you okay? Did that thing happen to you? Or, you know, no, it's all right. You're all right, really, even though you've got all these addictions and sins. It's okay, you're all right. A lot of you have that addiction. Now, we could say that that was created because we weren't cared for in our childhoods, that nobody made us feel okay ever. And that might be true for some of you, but for others of you, you had a parent there saying, you don't have to feel about that. You're okay, really. Don't think about what you did to little Billy in the playground. Really, like, you know, his mummy's yucky anyway. All of these kinds of things that made, made you grow up and have a feeling like, you know what, I should never really have to face yucky stuff about myself. I'm all right. And when people stand up here and say, guys, there's a few things you probably want to look at if you want to grow towards God and they're not really helping you or anyone else around you. You feel, oh, this is not very loving and get demanding about it. So you can go away and cry because Jesus didn't answer my 15th question and really it's because my dad ignored me, but that's really not what's going on. Does that make sense? All right, one more question. We have to wrap up because it's dinner time. Yeah, it's Sandra, yeah. Sandra, I forgot to say it the other times. Um, can you have both, like where you've been treated like a total spoiled brat where, you know, basically you're the queen of the universe and everyone should meet your demands, yes. which is what I am. Yes. And also also I recognise that underneath there's a lot of like you're not good enough and therefore we wanted to make you feel like you're the princess. Yeah, well, often when we've been made to feel like a princess in our childhood, it's very conditional. It's very conditional on us doing... A, B, C, and D. So while we receive the feeling like, oh, I should be treated like a princess, and we often carry that into adulthood, underneath there is a feeling of feeling like, gee, if I'm not A, B, C, and D, I'm nothing, I'm terrible. So, yeah, it's a complex kind of set of emotions to work through. Thank yeah. you. All right, guys, we better wrap up because it's dinner time. Yeah. Our homework. We have... <laughs> I'm not clapping myself, I'm clapping you. Um, or maybe I'm just nervous. Let's just see. <laughs> oh, uh, this is going to be very... Okay, there we go. So, basically, I want to ask you to explore how your facade feels about your child hurt and childlike feelings and how your hurt self feels in relation to the, re the treatment that the facade dishes out. Glennis? I just want to say thank you so much for um, all the insights and um, realisations and I know it hasn't hit here yet, but giving us the gift of all this information and the deconstruction especially, like I feel it's got a lot of answers in there and I know I won't get it straight away but um, yeah, I just, just no really appreciate it. No worries. Yeah. Thank you. I yeah. think we have to thank Jesus yeah. behind you That's really. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly guys, this work is so powerful and there, you're right there are so many answers in this and as you engage it like it really does work and I can't I just want to encourage you so much in the work on the facade and addictions because honestly I know it can feel like a struggle but it is so powerful and when you get to this stuff it does feel relieving but you have to put in the hard yards to get there sometimes <laughs>